Welcome back to Brashonomics, everyone. Heather Moore filling in for Ben Brashon. And with us still is Wes Jones, partner of Home Helper Consultants, who has closed over 1,000 pre-foreclosure short sale transactions over the past six years. And you've been listening. You're listening in on the last segment. You heard Wes say that there's expected to be another million or so in the coming year, which is crazy. Hi again, Wes. Hi, Heather. <laughs> so as I mentioned before we went to break, we have seven to ten questions that you frequently get about short sales. And I imagine if you're getting these all the time that other people have these questions. So I thought so uh, we'd uh, share them now. And I wanted to start with this one because I feel like this is something that probably hits home for a lot of people. And it's it's something you might hear that some people might be embarrassed about going through a short sale. Some people might be ashamed about going through this. Uh, is that something you hear? Do people, are they concerned that they're the only ones going through this, that nobody else is experiencing it? You know, believe it or not, it is still something that we hear very frequently. You know, we've been doing this radio show with you guys for the last two years. Um, you know, we've been talking about it, but it's the same questions over yeah. and over again. And that is one of the reasons that people really even hold back from even reaching out to find out what their options are. Really? Is that they're they just do, embarrassed? They, they're embarrassed. They feel like they're the only people going through this. They feel like they have failed in some way, and they shouldn't. And, you know, we're at a point now where... You know, I think people really need to just take a hard look and make the right financial decision, you know, for their family. And oftentimes that means moving on from the home that they're at. Yeah. And I think people just really need to realize that it's not their fault. You mm -hmm. know, they went into this with the, you know, all of the right expectations and, and you know, probably planning on living there the next 5, 10, 15 years, maybe, maybe forever. But values have readjusted so hard, and there could be some, you know, personal circumstances that have changed in their life, too, where that mortgage is just no longer affordable to them. And, you know, like I said, we're expecting a million of these this year nationwide. Yeah. We've already gone through millions of these over the last six years as a country. It's not something that I feel anybody should be ashamed about, um, but they do owe it to themselves to find out what their options are and see if it makes sense for them. Absolutely. And no one wants to be the only one doing anything. But if there's a million other people going through it a year, you are not the only one. Uh, moving on to some of these other questions. Uh, a lot of people, we, we have a credit expert on our show. And what we've learned is that a lot of people don't understand how credit works, what happens with their credit, mm -hmm. you know, when when they go through a short sale. How, how do you see short sales impacting credit scores for people? You know, I'll give you guys the quick answer for this one. Um, everybody is different. Yeah. And it probably has more to do with your credit history over time. Mm -hmm. But we are seeing credit scores rebound mm -hmm. in 12 to 18 months. And we're seeing people being able to uh, buy homes again in two to three years. Mm -hmm. So it's really pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, we've actually so yes, you'll take a hit. Yeah, you'll 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 take a hit. Definitely it'll take be, a hit. It'll be short term, but you know, two to three years, you should be able to yeah. buy a home again. And uh, we've seen, we've actually worked with people that were ready again after eighteen That's months. Great. It is great. And if you look at the time it takes to be able to buy a home again, eighteen months, two years, three years versus the time it could take for their home's value to recover, right. five years, seven years, ten years. What's quicker? Yeah. So it's important to know that you will take a hit, but you will bounce back. And uh, here's an interesting question, uh, I think, here. Are you required to be late on mortgage payments to do a short sale? Are you required to stop paying mortgage payments to do a short sale? They say that you're not required, and you hear the banks talk about, oh, yeah, we're doing short sales mm -hmm. uh, with people that are current. But I got to tell you, I, from what I've seen, I think that's more lip service and PR than anything else. Uh, we've only been able to get a handful of those through out of the 1,100 that we've done. A handful that, uh, that are have, continually uh, paying their... That, that, that's, that's correct. Uh, Wells Fargo last week told an agent in our office that their short sale was denied simply because uh, they were current on their loan. Mm -hmm. They had $3,000 uh, left to their name. They could make one or two more payments. Right. And they, Wells Fargo told them, no, we can't, you know, as long as you're current. Mm -hmm. Okay. So well, we've this... seen it happen a few times, but it's few and far between. And it really goes against the one reason that short sales go through. Yeah. It's that they mitigate the bank loss versus foreclosure. Mm -hmm. They do short sales because they recover more uh, with a short sale than they would by going through the foreclosure process. So if that seller is not a threat to them for foreclosure, mm -hmm. really not a lot of motivation to work with that person. I see. So, uh, you know, people who are current on their mortgage, a bank might disagree to a short sale. What other reasons would a bank agree or disagree to a short sale for? 
the, the only other reason that they may disagree with the short sale would be the price. Okay. You know, again, it goes back to it mitigates the bank loss. So if you've got a solid offer, if you've got a market value offer on your home, 99 out of 100 times, they're going to let that one go through because mm-hmm. they're going to recover more money. But if that offer is not solid, if that offer does not mitigate them loss, and they believe that they can get more money by going through the foreclosure process, then um, then they're going to they're going to proceed with foreclosure instead. So uh, those days of getting those deals through at 80 cents on the dollar, mm-hmm. they're they're they are over. They want market value. They will work with you in a short sale situation. But uh, you got to get them a good deal. Yeah. All right. We're here with Wes Jones, partner of Home Helper Consultants, talking about seven to ten frequently asked questions surrounding uh, short sales. I say seven to ten because I'm not sure if we'll get to ten. But uh, he- here's another one. Um, is a hardship required to get approved for a short sale these days? I would say three to four years ago, it was absolutely required, and we've seen things change quite a bit. Uh, it's less about the hardship. It's more about the numbers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say that 50% of the people that we're working with do not have the traditional hardship that banks were looking for a couple of years ago. Do, do you have uh, clients that still assume they need a hardship? Yes. Okay. I think that's one of the big assumptions right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, how long can someone stay in their property without making payments? You mentioned before that you're most likely going to have to stop making mortgage payments to go through with the short sale. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're seeing foreclosure activity pick up You know, as far as the timeline goes. You used to hear stories of people being behind by 18 or 24 months. That's the- that, I've heard you say that. 